and welcome to FPL Mate, your best mate for fantasy Premier League content for the 2023-24 season. My name is Dan and today we are doing the Game Week 8 episode of The 100 Experts. We're going to find out what The 100 Experts are up to this week in terms of their transfers, chips and captaincy. And it's a very exciting episode because for once, not everyone is captaining Erling Haaland. We've actually got some variety today as well as some amazing transfer trends for you to take on and apply to your own team. So guys, if you enjoy this one, make sure you're dropping a like. Let's try and hit 2,000 likes as always on this series. And uh, yeah, let's get cracking. So first of all, a massive shout out to our 100 experts that helped me out this week. All of them have supplied their transfer moves, captains and everything else for this game week to let us know what the trends are going to be. So massive shout out to these guys. Absolute legends. Let's see what they're up to. So out of the 100 expert managers, 29% are making just one transfer this game week, but 25% are making two transfers. So it is a big week for transfers indeed, even more so because 3% are making three transfers. So yeah, a lot of transfers going around this game week. It seems like one of those weeks where due to maybe injuries, changes in form and uh, like new players coming up and looking like they're going to be really good picks, there's going to be a lot of transfers this week. So for you guys at home, hopefully this is going to mean that you're going to be wanting to make some transfers as well. Even more evidence of this is the 31% of our experts that are using their wild card this game week. This is the highest we've seen all season by a long way. This really is a game week to be using your wild card if you feel that it might be the right moment for you. A lot of our experts using the kind of expert template team are going to be using a wild card this week. So think about it, guys. Let me know. Are you going to be using your wild card this week? Is there going to be a lot of you guys at home also using your wild card? I want to find out. Is this the big wild card game week? Is game week eight the week of the wild card? I feel like it is, but I want to hear from you guys as well. We have, of course, got 12% here not making a transfer this week as well. That's pretty low, uh, maybe slightly below average. So yeah, it, again, like I say, it is a week to be making transfers. Don't hold on to those transfers if you don't feel like you need to. And um, I have to say, a lot of the people who are not making the transfers are people who wildcarded last game week. So if you wildcarded last game week, maybe you're not going to need a transfer. But if you haven't, then it's time to make some big moves in your FPL team. And I'm excited to talk about what those moves are going to be. So first of all, let's look at the most popular Game Week 8 transfers in the world. This is among all FPL managers, and there's already, we've seen there's some heavy moves around the world. There's some, some serious high numbers here. 590,000 people transferring each of Son and Watkins. Both of those players, super close considering how big those numbers are. But this is a big week for transfers. It really is. And everyone kind of agrees on this one. We want to be making some moves. Son and Watkins are the most popular ones, followed by Cash and Madison. They're pretty popular too. So uh, yeah, this is really interesting stuff. We've some other players slightly down the list as well. But what I want to know is, do our experts agree with this list of players? Well, yes, they do. They really do. This is a week where experts and the general and more casual FPL manager alike kind of agreeing on this one that these are the kind of players we want to be moving in. Son, Watkins, Cash and Madison are not only the most popular players in the world, but they're also the most popular players among our experts as well. Although, You'll find out in a minute, guys, the order of things is slightly different. And there are some other surprises as well. But in general, yes, yes, there's a lot of correlation here. A lot of correlation indeed. In fact, only one player, Ariola, is not being transferred in by any of our expert managers. Although I have to say, Ariola is included in the vast majority, almost all of the wildcard teams that our experts are going for as well. So even though Ariola has technically got no transfers in, he is in a lot of wildcards. So maybe not a player you would necessarily bring in using your free transfers. If you're on a wild card, different scenario. So even the likes of Trippier, Anderson, Neto and Byrne, only one or two people are bringing each of those players in. But there's still there's still a little bit of interest in, in them for the free transfers and the hits as well. Because we have got a lot of our experts taking hits this game week. Which I think is going to be absolutely fine considering the fixture swings, the big swings that, are, that, that is going through FPL right now. We do need to start being proactive on our transfers and not holding on to them. So, popular transfers out. Well, there's only 57 of our FPL managers that are making normal transfers. The rest are either not making transfers or are wildcarding. So, out of 57, we do still have a hell of a lot of transfers being made, considering that 57 is a pretty low number for this series, but still a lot of strong trends being shown here. Now, Saka is the most popular transfer out. The reason for that is because, unfortunately, yesterday Saka did get injured in uh, Arsenal's Champions League game, and honestly, it did not look too good. It looks like he might be out for an extended period of time. So, that combined with his bad fixtures against City and Chelsea and Newcastle in a few weeks as well, it is going to be perhaps time to 
move out the likes of Saka. So maybe, I know I said it in buy, sell, keep, avoid. Yesterday, he was a keep, but he has been injured since then. So obviously, he is going to be a player who is sold by a lot of people. Botman also with an injury. He's being sold. Morris, his one game week punt worked out for a lot of owners, but it is time to move Morris on now after his uh, his nice like double game week we had there. And there's a few other people being transferred out as well. A Stupinian, he might be injured as well. We're going to find out about that shortly. Uh, but yeah, it might be that Stupinian is going to be injured as well. And Bumo and Rashford just not showing the form that we want to, as well as some of these other players, including Gusto, who is suspended. But these are the players being removed. Who are they being replaced with? Well, it is Son who tops the list, not just for the overall manager, but Son is also the most popular transfer in among our experts as well. But what's interesting is, although uh, the general manager likes Watkins pretty much as much as Son, well, in the experts, they don't seem to agree. They do like Watkins, don't get me wrong, with seven people transferring him in, that's going to be even more people when we include the wildcarders. But when you consider the fact that a lot of our experts already had Son, uh, and very, very few had Watkins prior to this game, week. We're still seeing Son as the by, by far the most popular transfer in, so it really does show how essential Son is going to be this game week. A real, real priority transfer in. Um, far more so than anyone else. So, some people will say, oh, who shall I bring in, Son or Watkins? Well, looking at the expert data, and it is, it is going to be team dependent, but looking at the expert data, Son is the priority man. Uh, even Cash seeing more transfers in, and he's been a reasonably popular player among our experts previously anyway, so even more people now bringing Cash in as well. He has got 10 transfers in out of 57. Madison is there on 8, so another Spurs player. Very nice indeed. We have got DRB complementing Watkins there as a few transfers in for him. Adogi, yes, another Spurs We've got Bowen, few transfers in for him. Few transfers in for Darwin and Luis Diaz as well. Three on each of those. People looking to get involved in the Liverpool assets. And we know that Darwin and Luis Diaz are probably going to be pretty nailed on considering Gagpo is injured and we've got Jota suspended. So Darwin and Luis Diaz are playing against Brighton next, against a Brighton team that just conceded, conceded a whole bunch of goals. Like, these players are definitely really, really interesting differential shouts. So, be really interested to see how these Liverpool assets get on because they're a lot cheaper than Salah and there might be a nice way for you to get involved in the Liverpool attack without having to spend too much money. So, I just thought it was really interesting that Darwin, three transfers in compared to Watkins, seven transfers in. Con considering, like, the score differences between Watkins and Darwin last game week, you can see that our experts are being proactive rather than reactive with the Darwin shout there. So, I like that there's a couple of nice differentials there, but let's continue on. So we're going to suggest some transfers based on this data. So first of all, very obvious, most popular transfer out and the most popular transfer in. Saka out, Son in. Really, really simple transfer there for you. There's a little bit of a price difference, but I'm hoping most of you guys will be able to afford this. Some of you guys are going to need a minus four. That's what some of our experts have had to do. Take a minus four or use two transfers in order to do this or maybe even wildcard as well. But whatever it takes, Saka to Son seems a real sensible move right now. Saka to Madison, if you've already got Son, also works really well to double up on that Spurs attack when we've got this uh, great fixture against Luton next, followed by Fulham. Two really nice fixtures, and Son and Madison are expected to score the big points. Now, if you don't have Saka, but you don't have Son either, maybe Rashford to Son could also work. Rashford pretty expensive right now. You could even throw Bruno Fernandes to Son as well. That would work pretty well. Uh, closer in price as well, so maybe that's slightly more affordable for a lot of people. Botman is obviously going to be injured for a minimum of two game weeks, we believe. So it might be a good move to take him out and replace him with Matty Cash. I think that's going to be a very, very good move for these future game weeks that Aston Villa have. Great fixtures, could be some clean sheets, but more importantly, goal returns for Cash because he's a super attacking defender. Morris is obviously the most popular transfer out among forwards, and he is probably going to be the guy to move to Watkins. Now, I have to say, I spoke a little bit about Watkins and how essential he is before, but... Among our experts, it's pretty much only Morris that is being transferred for Watkins. There's a few other players being transferred for Watkins, but like hardly any in really small quantities. So in general, I have to say, if you are an Alvarez owner or a Darwin owner or, you know, maybe our knee in your team... These players are not necessarily worth moving to Watkins, particularly if you'll need a hit to do that. So really, it's only like the bad, in quotes, bad forwards that you would want to actually be moving to Watkins. So the likes of Morris, who was only there as a one game week punt. If you've got Nicholas Jackson still in your team, he can move to, to Watkins as well. And every, any other forward you consider bad that you're unhappy with in your team, that is the kind of player you want to move to Watkins, not just anyone. So Watkins, an amazing pick in the forward slot, but 
don't sacrifice just anyone for him because there are going to be other ways of bringing points into your team. Another way could be moving out and Bumo and bringing in Diaby. If Diaby is fit and available for this game week, he's going to be really effective for the next period of games and should do better than Mbumo, as long as Mbumo doesn't score any cheeky penalties because we know what he's like there. Manchester United up next for Mbumo. Diaby has got a much more favourable Wolves fixture, which I think could be nice for him. So I do like these Aston Villa picks, Cash, Watkins and Diaby. I would say that in, in an ideal world, you want to have all three of them. It's not going to be possible for everyone. For me personally, it's probably not going to be possible for me. But if you can get two out of three of Cash, Watkins, Diaby, I think you're going to be in a really, really strong position for the upcoming game week. So we definitely would be suggesting those as transfers in, especially based on our data. And finally, let's talk about captaincy. And for the first game week this season, we're not going to be talking about Erling Haaland. Well, maybe we will a little bit because a few people are still captaining Erling Haaland. I guess the hold, the grip that Haaland has on so many FBL managers has not quite loosened yet because we do still have 9% going for Haaland away against Arsenal, which you would say, in theory, is the toughest game for Man City in the season. Maybe some of you guys would disagree. Maybe you'd say Newcastle away might be a tougher fixture for Haaland. But in general, we, we can definitely say that if there was going to be a time where you you don't captain Haaland, it's possibly going to be this week. Unless Haaland has a blank or gets injured, you're probably going to captain him most game weeks. But if you have to choose a week where you're not going to captain him, it's going to be this week, right? This is the week to go against him. And we've kind of seeing that reflected in our captaincy stats here. Now, what I have to say is that I did not expect Son to be so dominant. 60% means that even in a week where there's no Haaland and there is a bit of debate, there is still a clear favourite. Now, it's not an, a usual Haaland 90, 95% captaincy, but 60% is still quite significant in the context of things. So, uh, yeah, Son against Luton Town, 60%. Uh, we've got Salah there in second against Brighton, 18%, which is still a very large number. Let's not get it twisted. So Salah, definitely a really nice differential. If you want to go even further into the differentials, we've got Madison at 10% there as well. So if you're worried about Son's kind of, kind of current injury status, his fitness at the moment, worried about his get, him getting substituted off early in games, maybe Madison is more likely to get 90 minutes in a game. And that could be pretty tasty there, seeing what he can produce against Luton. We know Madison is a phenomenal player, of course. Uh, or Erling and like we say, at 9%. And we also got Luis Diaz at 2% as well. Didn't really see this one coming, to be honest. A bit, what, bit of an out there shout. But that's kind of reflected in the 2%. Only two people. It's pretty low number there. Not really enough of a trend for me to now recommend Luis Diaz. It really does seem like the Son, Salah, Madison and Haaland show this game week in terms of captaincy. Now, for those of you guys who are good at your mental arithmetic, you're good at your quick maths, you might have worked out that there is 1% missing and that is because we do have one one percenter this week and it is Darwin Nunez so one of our experts is captaining Darwin this game week I know crazy all of the hype around Watkins and actually Darwin is the guy getting handed the uh, captain's armband no one's going for Watkins as captain so it kind of shows uh, the faith in Darwin this this game week I guess uh, compared to uh, previous game weeks where it hasn't gone so well but yeah one person going for Darwin I'm super curious to see how that works out is that one expert going to look like a genius or an absolute fool? Uh, let me know what you think about that, guys. But yeah, Son, the standout captaincy. Uh, yeah, just like the wildcard situation, super interested to hear from you guys who you think is the best captain. And I want to hear why as well. I don't just want to hear which captain you're going for. I want to hear why. Who are you going for and why? Is Son the obvious choice, just like it's suggested by this data? Or is actually there a nice shout for the likes of Salah and Madison? Maybe even some of you guys have got a strong argument for Erling Haaland as well that maybe I have missed, which I, of course, I want to know because I've got Haaland. I guess I could consider captaining him, but one of you guys has got to convince me about that one first. And that is going to be the end of our experts video today. 2,000 likes is the target. Let's see if we can hit that once again. Really, really, uh, really happy and uh, just honoured by your support of this series so far this season. We are going to keep it going as long as you guys want it. So yeah, no doubt about that one. The love on this series has been amazing. So really, really do appreciate that. Make sure you guys are subscribing if you haven't done already. I know about half of you guys watching this video will have not subscribed. And we're trying to hit 200,000 subscribers at some point in the near future. That would be amazing if you could help me towards that. But Aside from that, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you check out this video if you want to. There's a Fantasy Football Hub free trial link down in the description if you want to check that one out. But aside from that, thank you so much for watching once again. And I will see you later, mates. Bye-bye.